Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at bond prices over time. So what happened to bond from the time it's issued in time it, in until the time it matures? What happened to the yield to maturity? What happened to the holding period if you hold this bond? This topic is covered on the CPA, BEC exam as well as the CFA exam. As always, I'm going to remind you that farhadlectures.com is a supplemental tool if you are studying for your CPA exam or CFA exam it covers topic such as this one as as well as other similar topics I don't replace your CPA course I supplement so if you're looking for additional resources please check out my website also link with me on LinkedIn subscribe to my YouTube I have 1800 plus accounting auditing tax finance as well as Excel tutorials if you like my lectures please like them and share them if they benefit you it means they might benefit other people and this is my website where I have various accounting and finance courses let's start by looking at a bond well what happened to bonds let me tell you real quick you want to know this relationship very well when we are dealing with bonds when we are dealing with bonds the company will offer a coupon rate what is a coupon rate it's how much the company is willing to pay the investors the people that's going to borrow money lend money to the company okay then we have the market rate the market rate is the ongoing market rate for similar companies so for example your company might be offering eight it means they want to borrow money one hundred thousand dollar they're willing to pay eight percent to lenders now lenders they're gonna look at your offer and they're gonna look at the market because they want to see what other companies are offering that are similar to yours if other companies are offering eight percent which is we consider others is the market what does that mean what means is you're gonna sell your bond at par at par means you're going to get exactly for the sake of illustration you are borrowing one hundred thousand dollar you will get exactly one hundred thousand dollar let me put the one hundred thousand dollar here now if you are offering eight percent the market is offering six percent well guess what you're offering better than the market everyone's gonna jump to your bond and try to buy your bond what's gonna happen as a result what do you think happened when we have when we have more demand for something the price will go up it means we say that the price sells at a premium this is basically an accounting term but simply put the bond would sell at one hundred and four thousand dollars I just made up this number but there's an exact formula how to find the price the price of the bond so what does it mean what does it mean one hundred and four thousand you wanted to borrow one hundred thousand they paid you one hundred and four thousand now bear in mind although they paid you more they didn't pay you more because they like your company well they do like it but what they like is this extra two percent that you will be paying them over other options so your bond will sell we say at a premium but simply put the person that bought the bond the person that bought the bond when they commute will see shortly then when they commute when they compute the return they're really they're really earning six percent okay it's what they because when they discount the payment they use the six percent same example the company is offering eight competitors are offering ten percent which is greater than you are offering less than the market well guess what no one in the right mind will pay you the full one hundred thousand dollar if others are paying ten percent therefore your bond will sell at a discount and I'm gonna make up the number you can sell your bond for ninety six percent what does it mean ninety six percent it means whoever buys the bond because they want to earn 10% because when they do the discount they discount everything based on the market rate so here you earn eight here you earn six and here you earn ten you always earn the market because as an investor you are looking to earn the market so having said so this is the this is the big idea that you have to understand that bond how what affects bond prices interest rate the market interest rate when interest rate is more then the coupon rate your bond will sell at a discount when it's less it will sell at a at a premium so on and so forth so let's take a look at what happened the bond over time so when the bond will the bond will sell at par when the coupon rate equal to the market rate coupon 8 market 8 we sell at a par in these circumstances the investor receives fair compensation how do we know it's fair compensation you're paying me 8% which is equal to the market which is I'm good okay so I don't need any 
any more because I can't get any more. No further capital gain is necessary to provide fair compensation. Now, when the coupon rate is lower, so when the coupon rate is lower than the market rate, so you're offering less than the market. Guess what? No one's going to give you the par. No one's going to give you the exact 100,000. The coupon payment alone will not provide bond investors as a high return as they would earn somewhere else. So what's going to happen to receive the, compens the competitive return? They also need some price appreciation. Price appreciation means lower, lower your price because I want you to lower your price. So when you lower your price, later on when the bond mature, I'll get more money. I will make up the difference. So you will sell your bond at a discount. Okay. Therefore, will bond will sell below the par value, which we call a discount, to provide a built-in gain. Built-in gains because you you paid less than a thousand for it. Later on, you will get at a thousand. The difference is a built-in gain. Conversely, also, if the bond rate exceeds the market, the interest income by itself is greater than the available elsewhere in the market. Here, your coupon rate, you are more generous because you have, somehow you have extra cash. You are willing to pay to attract lenders. So you pay more in interest. So the coupon rate is greater than the market rate. Okay. So investors will bid up the price of the bond above the par value the bond will sell at a premium. As the bond ap approaches maturity, its prices will fall because fewer of these above market payment remain. So as the bond mature, and we have to understand this, whether we have, so this is a bond sells at par. So th the bond sells at par here. So it's 100, 100%. So if the bond sells at a premium, and what's gonna happen to that premium the price of the bond will go down in value as it approaches maturity, which is 30 years. Here's the maturity. Why? Because as, 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 as you get closer to maturity date, you have less and less of those coupon payment. So the bond value will go down. Same thing if you sell a bond at a discount. Same thing in a sense that it will go back to par value as well. So the bond, when it matures, you always get the par value, which is also the face value. Whether it's a whether it's paying 12%, it will go down. Whether it's paying 4%, it will go up. The bond value would will go back to its par value. Okay, so the prices will fall because fewer of these above coupon payment remain. The resulting capital loss offset the large coupon payment, so the bondholder again receive a competitive return. So what happened when you have a bond like this one, which is which is a premium bond, you are getting more money. You are getting more money. You are getting more money in coupon payment, but you already pay too much for the bond. So as you get closer to maturity, you're going to have less of those payments. Therefore, the bond will go down. And basically, in accounting, we work this. You amortize the premium and you amortize the discount. So when you amortize the premium, it brings the bond down because the bond is above face value. It brings it down. When you amortize the discount, the bond will go up to the par value. To illustrate the built-in gain or loss, suppose a bond was issued several years ago when the interest rate was 7%. The bond annual coupon rate set at 7%. And for simplicity for this example, we're going to assume the coupon payment are made annually to make this simple. Now, with three years left, we have a five... Uh, yeah, within with, with three years left, we don't know what the bond is. With three years left in the bond's life, the market rate... Interest rate is eight. So let, let me let me ask you this. What happened to this bond when the market rate is eight? Well, this bond loses value. Why? Because because if you hold this bond and if you want to sell it, let's assume you hold it, you want to sell it. If you want to sell it to someone, they're going to look at your bond and sprint it on it 7%. And you would say, well, that's good, but I can go to the market and buy the bond at 8%. Why would I buy your bond? Maybe I like your company. I want to hold your bond. I will do it but I'm going to pay you less than a thousand dollar. Okay. So the bond fair value is the present value of the remaining annual payment plus the coupon payment. Hopefully we know how to compute the price of the bond. We did this in a prior session. So you will take $70 times the annuity factor of 8% uh, at three periods or for this, because this is simple, you will take 70,000 and basically multiplied by N equal to basically divided by one plus 08 raised to the third power which is the sum of those, um, and you factor the same thing. You This is the sum of those, which is three payment, and you do the same thing with $1,000. You discounted 8%, $1,000, divided by 1 plus 08, 
raised to the third power, when you add those two figures together, the bond is 974.24. As I told you, the bond will go down in value. So your bond value is worth less. Why? Because when you discounted everything, when you want to sell it, you're going to discount based on the market, on the current prices. So the bond went down in value. So here's what's going to happen. It's less than the par value, which is it's selling at a discount. In another year, after the tax coupon is paid and the remaining maturity fall to two years, now let's, let's assume now we're going to go from year two to year one. Now they make the payment. Let's see what's going to happen. The bond will sell at 982. And we're going to do the same thing discount the $70, 8%, two years remaining, because one year went by, $1,000 discounted at 8%, two years remaining. Again, the bond is 982. Notice the bond went up in value from 974.23 to 982. Why? Because the bond keeps on moving until it reaches maturity, right? Until it reaches, until it reaches maturity. But let's see what happened. Here, what happened is this. It provided a capital gain. Notice it went from 974.23 to 982. It provided a capital gain of $7.94. This is capital gain. So if the investor purchased the bond at 974, the total return will be the coupon payment plus the $7.94, which is a total return of $77.94. If we compute the return, 77.97 divided by what you paid you'll get 8%. And this is exactly what we wanted to earn. So if somebody wanted to buy this bond, they will pay you exactly seven, I'm sorry, they'll pay exactly uh, 974, which will give them 8% return. Now let's assume a year later, what's gonna happen a year later? A year later, the same thing. You're gonna take $70, it's gonna have one year left in the, in the life of the bond, and you're gonna discount this, one plus 0.8, one plus 0.8, plus $1,000, you have one payment left, plus one plus 0.8, I don't have to put raised to the first power, it's always raised to the first power. And what's gonna happen now is the bond, it's gonna be valued at $990.74. Same thing, if you compute, if you compute the increase in value, which is, it went, the difference between 982.12 and 990.74, which is approximately, $12, approximately $12, plus the $70 coupon payment, and you divide this by 982. If somebody bought it at 982.217, you'll get exactly 8%. So the point is, you are earning 8% on this bond because you are discounting everything at 8%. So you discount everything at 8% and you would earn exactly 8%. So you might be thinking, hold on a second, it's paying 7%. Why am I earning 8? Because you did not pay a thousand dollar. If you pay the full thousand dollar for it, you will earn 7%. Well, what happened is depending on what you paid, that's your basically your holding period return. So this is your holding period return. So let's take a look at few. Um, uh, let, let's look at few bonds and just let's kind of take a look at them. Maturity date 2018, 2020, 22, 26, 26, 2030, 2043, and 2047. So notice as time is increasing, this is for U.S. Treasury bonds. So the first thing I want you to know, as time, you know, as time goes into the future, the yield to maturity is higher. And hopefully this makes sense because if somebody wants to buy a bond that's gonna pay that's gonna pay the maturity value in 2047, they want to be compensated. Compensated for what? Compensated for the risk that they are taking. So the long, generally speaking, generally speaking, if two bonds are equal uh, and everything except the time value, the bond that it has more time to mature should pay more to compensate for the holder. Now let's take a look at these two bonds that they have the same uh, basically the same maturity. One bond pays 6%, the other bond pays 1.65. This is the coupon. Hold on a second, this does not make any sense. Well, it does make sense. Because if we look at their yield to maturity, it's almost the same. They should be very similar, but they're not. Now, why why is that the case? Why is this bond earning 2.58? Be because if you're gonna buy this bond, you're gonna pay 92.91. If you're gonna pay the 6% bond, it's you're gonna have to pay 128%. So notice for the 6% bond, okay, you're getting more money, but you are paying a premium. You are paying a huge premium, 28% premium over the bond. The bond with the lower coupon, you are not paying that much uh, premium. Actually, you're buying it at a discount of the face value because the face value is 100 but you're not getting anything. This bond is paying 1.6, not, get, not getting anything means a low rate. It means the yield to maturity is 
2.05 and hopefully you know how to compute the yield to maturity because we did it in a prior session so of course the yields across bonds are not all precisely equal so they don't have to be precisely equal however we can say that the longer term bond okay promise a higher yield why because you want to be compensated for the time value because you're holding this bond for a longer period of time so let's take a look at a 30-year bond paying an annual coupon of $80 and selling at eight per, at 1000 Well, the bond is initial yield is to maturity. YTM is 8%. That's how much it's paying. It's selling for 1000 If the yield remain at 8%, the bond will price would remain at par. So the holding period will also be 8%. So let's suppose the bond price increased to 1050 what will the holding period now will be greater than 8%. So how do we compute the holding period now? If it went up 2050, you're going to have a $50 appreciation plus $80 in coupon. So you're looking at a return of $130 between appreciation and the coupon divided by a price of a thousand. Your holding period is 13 percent well suppose let's just switch this example a little by the end of the first year the bond yield to maturity is 8.5 find the one year holding period and compare it to the initial eight percent yield to maturity so the same bond except that now the yield to maturity is 8.5 well let's go ahead and find the price of the bond well we have n equal to 29 because by the end of the first year year one went by we're going to assume i equal to 8.5 the interest rate is 8.5 the payment of the bond is equal to $80 that's going to stay fixed and the future value of this bond is $1,000. So first, what we have to do is find the price of the bond, the price of the bond. So let's go ahead. Let me show you on a financial calculator. Basically, you input everything and click on compute the price, uh, compute PV. But let's let me show it to you on the uh, on, on the website. So I don't have a financial calculator at least, but it's the same thing. So N, the number of periods here is for our example is 29 years left. We said the payment is $80. The future value you're going to get back $1,000. And the the uh, the present value we're looking for, we're looking for that. The uh, interest rate is 8.5 and let's compute the present value so you'll pay for this bond the price of this bond is 946 dollars and 70 cent 946 70. let's go back to the powerpoint and figure out exactly what's the holding period now well of the price we said 946.70 so the price went down 946 so we have a thousand minus 946.7. So we have a reduction of approximately what? $53.30. Yes. Yes, I think my math is right. Yes, uh, $53.30. This is how much the price went down in value. So we have $80 in coupon payment. So the coupon payment is $80, but we lost in value $53.30. It's a capital appreciate capital depreciation. And remember, we paid $1,000. Now the bond is returning 2.6. 2.66 or 2.67%. So notice here what happened is the the, uh, the uh, our holding our holding period or the rate of return went went down. Why? Because because the the, the uh, yield to maturity is 8.5. If we discount everything based on that rate, we're only paying eight. We're only paying eight percent. This bond paying eight percent. Well, guess what? It's 2.69. So simply put, remember that the holding period and yield to maturity, they don't have to be the same, the same thing. In the next session, we would look at zero coupon bonds and treasury strips. Again, if you like this recording, please like it and share it. Connect with me and don't forget to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. Study hard and stay safe.